In this video, I'm going to be showing you a fast and efficient method to using deconvolution in PixInsight. The two prerequisites, firstly PSF image, which you can get here, and secondly Starnet, which you can get here. All right, so to start off with, we have our luminance. I have an example luminance image here. I have cropped the edges off and I've applied DBU. So at this stage, I would be performing decon. To start off with, I'm going to make two duplicates. I'm going to rename this one to Orange Linear, and we will store that for use later. The next one, we're just going to rename to SDF, and we're going to go and apply our screen transfer function to it. So I just hit the auto stretch button, apply the instance to the histogram tool, and apply the stretch. Obviously, it looks like that. Uh, we can minimize these now. So now we have a copy that's got the STF applied. Uh, the next thing we want to do is make a range mask. So we would go to mask generation, range selection. Uh, open up our preview. I've already got some settings here that work well. So the point of this mask is to mask out where we want to apply our decon. So we only want to apply decon to the high intensity regions with all the nebulosity. So this looks fairly good and you want some sort of smoothness on, on it. And yeah, so we hit apply to generate our mask. All right, we can minimize that for now and put it up here, close range mask. Uh, now with our STF, we're going to generate a star mask, and we'll do that with Starnet. So that we go to open Starnet, and we have create star mask enabled, and I'm going to apply that. Alright, so Starnet has finished creating our star mask. It will usually take a while, so I had to make a cut here. I'll do a quick check just to see that it hasn't picked up any other structures that aren't stars because that can happen. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much if some sort of artifacting like that happens. Not too much of a big deal. Um, if I apply an STF to it that might be something that isn't a star but I'm not too fussed. Uh, this looks very good and I think it's a much better alternative to making a, a mask manually with the star mask tool. So for now, I'm just going to iconize it, put it away. The next thing we want to do is generate a PSF. And we will do that with a script called PSF image. We open it up. Uh, the only real things you need to alter is the sensitivity. Uh, if you're not picking up stars, then you need to lower the value. If you're picking up too many, then the process that this, how it works, I guess, will take a lot longer finding stars to sample. So I think 1.8 might be best. And these always seem to work for me. So I hit evaluate. All right, so the PSF image also took quite a while. It's now finished. So before you hit OK or anything, you want to hit create. And it creates this little image here, which is our PSF model. Uh, you can then hit OK, and it'll close the app. Okay, so now we have our PSF model. Uh, we're actually ready to perform the decon now. So let's open up deconvolution. Uh, we want to go to the tab external PSF. Select our PSF image that we just generated. And you can see that it's 11 by 11 pixels. I'm going to increase iterations to about 30. I'm going to back this noise reduction to 0.8. That one can go up to 0.8. Increase the other layers. So I'm just going to steal some settings that I've seen that work quite well. So feel free to copy these. Alright. So this, these are pretty much the settings that I use for decon. Uh, make sure that deringing is turned off because uh, we're going to fix the ringing with uh, adding the stars back in. 
um, before we apply our decon, we want to apply our range mask. So we apply the range mask, minimize. Uh, I'm going to create some previews that we can do some quick checks with. So for example, I'm just going to work with one. So we apply our decon. All right, so we can toggle with Control Shift Z. You can see the edge of the range mask here protects all these other stars and area, but so we're getting some sharpness out. Looks fairly nice. Another better region might be around here. So I'll just create another preview and check that. Alright, so I can toggle it on and off. Looks okay. Really defining the edge along the nebula. You want to be careful that the noise threshold isn't too low. Uh, otherwise, you get this distinctive noise pattern from deconvolution. It's not really showing up here because the settings are fairly modest. But let's say I'm happy with these settings. You would just then apply decon to the image. Alright, so decon has been applied and it looks terrible with all the ringing. So the next step is going to be fixing that. We can minimize decon. Uh, we can minimize that. Uh, we want to open up the star mask that we made, which is here. The first thing we want to do is binarize it because there are some stars that are fairly faint, and so that means the masking isn't going to completely cover all the stars. We want to make sure that all the stars are solid white. Uh, B for binarize. We open up the real-time preview and I think 0 0.02 will be fine. Just double check that your not losing stars and not adding background with the binaries. Oops. It looks fairly fine here. Alright. Once we've binarized it, we need to apply a convolution because these are some very harsh edges. And so we go to convolution, open up the real time preview. And we just mess around with the shape and standard deviation. Uh, I might pay to open up a small little preview. And just work on one star at a time. So yeah, if the standard deviation is too big, it's a bit of a blur. All right, so that should be fine. So now that we've applied the convolution, uh, we need to apply it uh, to the whole image here. All right, so that the star mask is convoluted. Okay, so now we need to remove the current mask that's on our decon image. That's the range mask. We'll remove it by pressing that button. Uh, we can now apply our star mask to the image. And so now you can see that it reveals all the stars. And hopefully it includes the ringing part. So we'll find out in a moment whether or not it does. 
So I'm just going to use one of these pre-existing previews to make our test. The next step we want to do is open up pixel math. And this is where that original linear is going to come in handy. Uh, we don't need to open it, we can just leave it where it is. All we need to do is type in the name that we gave it. In my case it was orig underscore linear. So now we can apply it to our preview. Um, and it doesn't look quite right. Uh, in this case I would apply it again, but that won't do anything because it's a preview. Uh, so it might pay to just go to the original image and zoom in. So I'll apply it. And we still have artifacting, slight ringing. We do another pass and apply it again. And it gets slightly better. However, it's still not fixing it quite enough. So the way I think we need to fix this is by applying some morphology to our star mask. So we go to morphology. We want to dilate the stars, make them larger, cover a larger area. Uh, so hopefully this should be enough. So they're a lot more bloated now. So I'm just going to undo the pixel math we've applied and reapply. See that's looking a lot better. I'll do another pass. We are starting to see still some circles but The more we apply the pixel math, the more it seems to disappear. It's nearly indistinguishable. There's still a couple stars around. So you really have to apply, uh, play with how much you dilate your star mask. Uh, but it looks fairly fine. So just to show off what we've done uh, as a summary, we started off with a linear image. We then applied decon. And so you can notice here, if I toggle between before and after, uh, we've achieved sharper nebulosity. And then we've simply added the stars back in via a star mask and pixel map. And that's about it.